we sped this up. If I would say, oh, this, this is not something I expected, I know this part only should cut uh, uh, in half the time, I can check again feeds and speeds because this is most likely the uh, part where I made an error. I can go like to 600 inch per minute, which I could certainly do with a little bit more of a bigger cutter and generate it again and I see, ha, the whole thing can be cut in uh, five minutes and it can be cut in five minutes, just not that pretty. Um, then um, there are a couple of functions which are really cool. I can uh, transform the toolpath, reverse the toolpath. I can instance the toolpath. I can take this pattern and if I have a 4 by 8 sheet, I can tell RhinoCam, please make 10 by 20 or 30 of those um, parts and I don't have to do anything in RhinoCam. In, in Rhino duplicates a model or anything, the toolpath will simply be insta instanced. I can do that in z-axis as well, um, which is very useful according to Uday for uh, roughing. So which means I can uh, take this and, and copy it three times and cut through a thicker layer of material without any uh, further uh, ado. I can fit arcs, I can do a lot of other things and for me personally, the most fantastic thing is I can take, I can select those curves and I can convert them back into Rhino curves. So I can take those generated curves, put them back into Rhino and use them for extrusions, modeling and other, other very, very cool uh, options uh, leading to very artistic or uh, uh, structural uh, models. So I think without further ado, uh, we generated the, uh, the tool path. I can, uh, basically now so-called post it and I will just... Um, uh, Reiner, yeah. I think you should also show the simulation aspect of it. Oh, yeah, 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 of course. Um, I just show, uh, once I post those instructions when I'm happy with them, uh, then this is uh, pretty much what we look at. But let, let, me, let, me, let me go back one second to the uh, simulation. How silly of me. Um, in the simulation uh, tab, um, it, it's, it's a nice workflow anyway, so you, you go to set up, you create something, you go to simulate and you're pretty much done. It's, it, it guides you, the whole system guides you through the process, so it's not very confusing. Here I get the definition uh, for my uh, virtual box stock um, and I uh, tell it the uh, zero point is here. This is where I basically drive the machine to with the tip of the tool uh, later and uh, tell it once it is right there, this is zero, zero, zero. So all programs involved are uh, in the know. Then the, the part size is six by seven inches, one, six, one inch high. It, the height here doesn't matter because it will just protrude to the bottom a little bit more if it's thicker. And there we go. We have our orange virtual foam block and uh, the tool pass, which I can actually uh, switch off. Oops and then I can uh, let the uh, simulation run. And here's my little cutting tool and it does what I told it to do. It just races across the surface and uh, uh, cuts out the part. It, uh, it really does look rough but believe me, once it's cut it is surprisingly nice. Uh, in reality, of course, I would uh, use the NURBS which would take all the facets away uh, but uh, the uh, uh, coarseness of the toolpath here is not really an, an issue once you uh, uh, start uh, woodworking. So now it's almost done. I'll just let this run in uh, real time for a second. The funny thing is that the smaller this becomes, the faster the machine goes back and forth. So in the end it's like, <laughs> it's really funny. Zip, and the part is done. So now, if I would like to send this uh, to a client, this, this doesn't really look that cool. If I want to, uh, in quotes, sexify this a lot, <coughs> uh, Microsoft offers me a really, really great opportunity to uh, export this carved model to an STL file, which is really awesome because I can load this in any render engine again. And uh, as you remember, the uh, carved door part, which I showed you in the dark wood, is actually uh, nothing else than a um, a uh, wood textured uh, STL file from uh, the pre-run and um, so that was quite impressive how that came out. So you can use uh, RhinoCam uh, also to generate an STL model or to take the cut geometry uh, as you expect it and uh, render it in any other application. You can also use it actually to model stuff. So there are a lot of options in, in this simple uh, uh, 
uh, line again. So now uh, back where I uh, uh, was, um, I can just post the instructions and uh, the instructions look like that. It loads it in a notepad. Um, <clears throat> here is, for example, S18000 that uh, switches on the spindle, um, sets the spindle speed to 18,000 RPM. Then M03, M08 is start as a dust collector. And uh, then we have the first uh, positioning command, go to Z coordinate 0 0.0388. And then it just goes from there to uh, a set uh, feed speeds and more coordinates, and it starts to uh, walk off the pattern I gave to it. So after a while, you see in the beginning there was no model, so it's only X and Y uh, uh, movements to clean out this flat, and after a short period of time, it will encounter the uh, geometry. And we see that there are bursts of Z positionings as well which means that here it starts to probably cut um, right there, the first couple of uh, cuts. So, And uh, a brief check to see that this is uh, uh, 0 0.15 uh, deep um, makes me confident. If this would be 3 inches deep and the cutter is only 3 16 long, then you know you'll be ready for a world of, of pain when you actually <laughs> release this on the machine. Because the machine doesn't care. She says, well, the big guy knows what he wants. I will just drill the bit through the uh, table. Not that this ever happened to me. So, um, and after quite some while, what did we say, 34 minutes, uh, we stop the program, switch off the dust collector, and end the session. So. That's pretty much uh, the modeling part, and um, now we can uh, very quickly look at when I can pull up my uh, media player again. Now we can basically look at the uh, machine running. Here you can see uh, uh, the uh, here you can see the coordinates. Uh, the G code, which you saw as a uh, file, which has been loaded in here by my Swiss memory uh, memory plug. Uh, you can see the uh, now this uh, X, Y, and Z coordinates. They're alive, and this is actually um, exactly where the machine is in in coordinates right now. And uh, then here you can see the lights are blinking, signals are are are, are uh, flowing, and here is the start of the session. And here is it dives in three sixteenths and starts to cut uh, the part. And as you can remember, there's quite a little bit of a uh, flat part to uh, overcome. And this is the beauty of uh, fast forward. So those are the first few minutes. And here again, you can see the coordinate move uh, of the uh, machine. This is the first machine we ever built with those bells, and we were very skeptical, but it was so cheap. And uh, it turned out to be such a great uh, system to drive a woodworking machine. So now, I'll just, uh, here you see the machine going up and down, and it's nothing else than the translated uh, commands in the file you've seen before. And it basically traces the uh, turquoise lines uh, from the Rhino uh, session here, oops, those turquoise lines are basically now uh, machined in uh, in real time. So this takes 30 minutes, and I'll spare you the 30 minutes. At one stage, I decided to uh, put my shop watch there, uh, just to find <laughs> to my horror in a minute that the dust collector here was about to swallow the watch. So that was one of the funny moments when I recorded that. <laughs> I just saw out of the blink of my eye when it started to disappear there. So um, I moved the dust collector a little bit away. So we're here at uh, 2.10, one day where I started to cut it, 2.12, 13. And you wouldn't believe the noise I have in my headset right now, 22. 27. When I mention shop watch, it's interesting. In my shop, we do so many different things. I have a uh, garment stand. I have a totally 